Hello you bunch of tankers and welcome back to the channel and welcome to any new players. Today's video is a little list of new player tips and tricks, things that I wish I had had known, I wished I had found out straight away when I started playing the game. Now there is no particular order to this, it is just a little list of items that can just help you out with your first few battles and hopefully all the way through your World of Tanks career. So. Let's get into the tips. My first piece of advice? Well, that would be the same piece of advice you could give for any video game when you first pick it up. Head into your options, head to controls, and have a look at the control scheme for the game. Now, you may have gone through the tutorials, and you may have even played War Stories where you get a basic outline of the controls so you know what to press, but in here, if something doesn't feel right, there are various configurations that you can scroll through and just have a look and see what would suit you better. You could try each and every one and try and find the one that feels best for you. Being comfortable really helps you out when you're playing online. It's one less thing, thing to think about. So have a little gander through, see how you feel. And your sensitivities are also in here. So if it feels a little bit too slow and non-responsive, or if it feels like it's a little bit too twitchy, you can change your sensitivities to whatever you would like. Now, I would recommend doing this in tutorials or war stories so you can have a little bit of a play and get a feel for the, each of the different configurations to see which one you like without worrying that you're going to get destroyed by an enemy player. Remember, you don't have to pay gold for premium consumables or premium ammunition. If you go into your supplies menu in the garage, hover over your premium shells and press triangle on PlayStation or Y on Xbox, and this will change it to silver, meaning you don't have to pay real money for it. Exactly the same with premium consumables. Instead of paying 50 gold, triangle or Y, and this will change it to silver, meaning it's nice and free and earnable in-game without having to pay any real money at all. Always make sure that you have horizontal stabilization turned on. When it is turned off and you go into zoom mode, when you move the hull of your tank, the gun and the turret will move in the direction of the hull. As you can see, this can be quite annoying if you get hit by a friendly team player or if you accidentally knock the left stick of your tank. Now, if we go into options, click over to game and turn horizontal stabilization, you can now see the difference. If I just move the hull, the gun stays in the same position as it was before I started moving the hull. Just a handy little tip there that sometimes can help you out when you've got people that are a little bit over eager and all they want to do is try and barge past you. Do you sometimes find when reversing and turning at the same time, the tank seems to react in a very weird way and move in a direction you really don't want it to. Well, a little trick that I learned quite early on in the game by visiting the forums was to head into controls and make sure you turn inverted reverse on. Now this does sound a little bit weird and at first feels a little bit strange, but trust me, try it, see how you feel. It makes a world of difference and you never know, it might just be a little thing you've never tried that completely changes your game style. So, I'm going to guess you figured out that pressing L2 on PlayStation or LT on Xbox means that you go into zoomed in mode. Now, if you press the right stick down, this takes you into a further zoom called sniper mode. Make sure you press this so you can aim at weak spots nice and reliably and then take your shots as and when you need to. Whilst playing as artillery, you may have noticed that when you hold down the aim button that it only brings up the aim reticle a square in front of where the vehicle is. Well, keep that aim button held down and open the big map either using the touchpad on PlayStation or the select button on Xbox. Move to the grid square that you want to be and press triangle on PlayStation or Y on Xbox and it will take your aiming reticle to the square that you selected. Also, whilst in this zoomed in mode, you can tap the right stick to go into sniper mode just like you would on a standard tank. Another little thing to this is if you want to see the trajectory of your shell and where it's hitting obstacles or if there's going to be anything in the way, press and hold the right stick and you will get trajectory mode. You can still zoom in and out of this 
but you can now see where your shot is going to go. Also, whilst playing as artillery, if your shot is going to be blocked, you see the little line in the center of the screen that shows the trajectory of your round? Well, it will go red if there's anything blocking it. Move past this obstacle, and if the arc is right, it will go green, meaning that you can fire over the obstacle. Simple. Whilst playing as artillery or a tank destroyer without a turret, you may notice on the left hand side of your screen that it says hull lock in yellow letters. This means hull lock is turned on. What does that mean? Well, it is really quite simple once you know. Hull lock when it's turned on means that as you traverse your gun, only the gun will move and the actual vehicle will stay still. Turn your hull lock off and as you traverse your gun, the whole vehicle will turn with it. How do you turn hull lock on and off? Well, there's two options for this. Press left on the D-pad depending on your controller scheme or go into your options Head over to game, and here you can see there is non-siege TD, and also artillery start, hull lock on. With these ticked, every time you start a game, hull lock will automatically be turned on. Untick them, and every game you start, hull lock will automatically be turned off. So like I said, it is pretty simple once you know. Are you frustrated that when you want to look behind you, your turret moves with you? Well, fear not. If you hold R1 on PlayStation or RB on Xbox and move the right stick, you can freely look around your tank without the turret moving at all. This is fantastic when you need to reverse, but you need to see if there's anybody behind you because you don't want to ram a friendly. Also, it means that the rear of your turret is not being exposed to the enemy, keeping your gun forward and in the fight. When using an autoloader, if you're halfway through a drum and you want to reload, you don't have to fire all the shells off. Just click right on the D-pad and this will reload the entire clip, giving you a nice, fresh set of shells to fire at your enemy. Did you know that there is cruise control in the game? Depending on the configuration that you've got, you can easily move forward, hit the cruise control button, and as you can see on the bottom left, the speedometer turns gold. This tells you that your cruise control is activated. Turn it off again, and the speedometer numbers turn back to white. Also, with cruise control, you can do it in reverse or forwards, and if you activate your cruise control in the direction that you want to go before the battle starts, when the counter hits zero, your tank will instantly move off in the direction that you've selected. Did you know that you can switch between the small compass map that you get by default and the large mini map that you see a lot of people using? Well, there's two ways you can do this. First, if you go into your options, scroll over to game and then move down to toggle mini map. If it's ticked, that means that you get the square one. If it's unticked, then you get the small compass. Also, a faster, easier way to do this in the heat of battle on PlayStation, press and hold the touchpad and this will switch between the maps. Also, just do the same thing on Xbox using the select button, and again, you can switch between the maps. Both have their merits. Some are better close quarters, some are better to use to see the entire battle. That is totally up to you, but at least now you know how to change it. Did you know that you can auto lock onto an enemy? Just press R1 on PlayStation or RB on Xbox and this will snap your gun round to any visible enemies. Meaning then you can zoom in and take as many shots as you want. Remember though, auto locking only aims for the center mass of the tank. So when you are fighting moving targets, moving from left to right or right to left, you will need to manually aim these shots because if you go for something that's on the move and it's aiming for center mass, you will end up firing behind the tank that you want to hit. Be sure to have aim assist turned off at all times. Whilst it sounds a great idea, aim assist actually will help your reticle move with a tank, but it does make it very difficult to lead shots as your reticle, as you can see, moves so slowly whilst it is over an enemy vehicle. Aim assist turned off allows you to lead your target, making sure that you hit every single round that you want to hit. 
Now to take aim assist off, go into game and untick aim assist in the options menu. Never sit directly behind a teammate. You never know when they need to back up and you sat right behind them may mean that they cannot move their tank when they need to to get out of trouble and ultimately this will probably end up in them being dead. Don't be that guy. Always give your teammates room and have fun. And last, but definitely by no means not least, be patient, don't rush through the tears. This is a game that is easy to learn, but difficult to master. There are so many little mechanics that go on in the background that you need to take into account when getting into those higher tier games. Play War Stories, play the tutorials, make sure that you've got the controls down and you know exactly what you're doing and what buttons to press. War Stories as well, when you go through them, you will get yourselves crews, and a lot of these crews will have a skill on them. Skills and perks are very useful things to have on your crews. I will link a video uh, of crew training that you can go and watch next as another new player guide. But remember, there is no award for getting to tier 10 the fastest. You'll only get frustrated with the gameplay because you're not too sure what's going on. Hover around the mid tiers, there's some fantastic historical tanks in there that you can play and a lot of them are massive, massive bundles of fun that veteran players go back and play time and time again. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if it has helped you, feel free to give me a like, it really helps the channel and if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and I will see you all in the next video.